All right, uh, let's come back. Okay, so uh, so we, we talk about the hash table. We ha talk about a little bit of the surface tree that we know that I haven't got into deeper. Um, but uh, <coughs> Bor Boros uh, Wheeler transformation is something that uh, for some of the students uh, uh, really need to know about it. It's very pretty unique. Uh, by the way, how many of you have already heard about this or, or uh, learned about this in, in some class? Have you in, in some class already did? Yes or no? No? Okay. All right. So it w worth going through. Um, so this transformation is initially developed. It's initially developed by uh, these two names, uh, Boros and Wheeler. <laughs> In 1994, actually, was an earlier job uh, by the Wheeler from 1982. And its algorithm is nothing to do with uh, alignment or sequence at all. It's an algorithm that is developed for data compression. Okay? Actually, this is something BZIP2 is using still. So the idea here is uh, you got a string of uh, taxes. Right? You want to compress it. You want to compress it. That, that's the idea. So, after you do the borrow BWT, all the letters will remain in the same value. If this is S, there will be still another S in, in the out, output ones. So all, everything is remain the same value. But the orders are changed. Okay? And the feature, one of the features of this transformation is if the original string had several substrings that occurred often, for example, if you look at a a text, and uh, especially in English, there is probably a lot of the there, T H E, right? And uh, and those are the things that uh, you really can index it and eventually compress them. All right. Um, so so if the original string had several sub substrings that occurred often, the transformation substring will uh, have several places where a single character is repeated multiple times. And uh, for example, things like this, x, x, or x, x. And these are really good places for you to do the so-called compression. Right? You don't have to record every single one. You just uh, record their, their locations, and that'll be fine. And uh, so that's the whole point of initially why this uh, uh, transformation was developed. OK, so um, well, let's, let's, let's look at it. So reversible permutation used originally in compression. And, uh, so let's, uh, I'll first go through how we do this uh, uh, BWT. And, and then we, we can see some of the features and how we do use that into the alignment of query systems. So this is the original string, for example, ACAACG. All right? So what happens is you will have a, make a tag on here, a dollar sign, which is always good. All right? So you put it in here, so the same, exactly the same thing. Now, what you want to do is uh, to do one base shift. So you can see that everything is a C, A, C, G, G, and dollar, and this A comes to the back. All right? Do it again. 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 Exactly the same letters. However, these uh, uh, positions of the nucleotide shift one base pair each time. OK? And next, what you do is uh, you resort this, uh, sort this uh, uh, original string. You sort it based on the first letter. Dollar sign has the smallest value, and the A, 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 C, G, based on A, C, G. And for this A, and it's A, C, C, right? This is pi, this is C, so A, G. So you really rank this, uh, re resort this uh, matrix and into this case. And this is something called the uh, uh, Boros Wheeler matrix. Okay, we'll see how we use this, these features. And then what you got here is the last column here, which is GC dollar AAAC. And this is the initial la uh, string, and this will be after your trans transformation what the string will look like. All right? I'm going to give you a test to do it. Probably not yet, all right? So once the, 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 the BWT is built, all the else shown is discarded. So all this matrix is actually doesn't exist, all right? So after you do the BLT, so basically you got the first st letter string and the last string after transformation, and the, the other remaining ones are 
just for il illustration purposes. All right, there's uh, two questions. The first one is uh, why this uh, is reversible. So this is the uh, original string, and this is uh, after you do the bar Wheeler's transformation, and this is the end output string. Okay, so this is a kind of a sort, right? In any of a computer compute computational language, you probably have a function called a sort, right? Usually, you don't have a function called unsort. You probably don't want to do that any, anyways. But, but you don't have a, a function called unsort, just based on the sorted ones. Is that right? OK. For this BWT, there is a, you can consider this as, as one of the sort, and then you can do the unsort. So it's reversible. This is one of the major features of this transformation. And, uh, but the second question, which is important, how does this strange transformation can help me for the sequence alignment? All right, so let's go through that. Okay, before we see the query part, before we see how the sequence alignment uh, will work, and let's first go to see how this will be reversed. So I, I briefly went through how to get a T from the BWTT, right? Now, if you have this end result, how can you get back to the, the T? So what happens is uh, there's some good features on that. So construct the first column in the BWT matrix based on the transformed one. So if your, your, your transformed one is GC dollar AAAC, all right? And since all the letters will remain the same, so you can really reconstruct the first column. It's pretty simple. So just uh, resort all these uh, letters. So it's dollar and A, 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 C, C, G. All right, that's it, OK? And the uh, next step is uh, um, a, a property that makes this BW reversible. It's called LF mapping. It's the last column, first column mapping, OK? So all these uh, languages are not human language, so you, you really don't want to read those. Uh, let's just uh, go through this and to see how this works, OK? What happens is, uh, if you see a A here, this A ranks the second in the final output, okay? It was supposed to rank the second in the first column as well, okay? This is called the, the so far called LF, last column, first column rule, okay? So you can see this A, the second A here corresponding to the second A among all these strings. So for C, we got a 2C here. If this one, will correspond to this C, and this one will correspond to this C, okay? And when we do the reverse transcription, not call it reverse, re reverse transformation, okay? And what happens is uh, this, you will start from the, so this, keep in mind, that all the middle ones are really invisible, right? You only have the last column, which is your BWT transformed, and your first one, which is the, sorted the first one, uh, the, the last column, okay? And uh, you will start from the very beginning, which is the G, okay? And next one, you will look for the first column where the G is. Oh, G is here, okay? And uh, your next sequence will be this one, which is C, okay? And then you got this C, now you want to map this C back to the first column, which this C happens to be the second C among these strings. Okay, now you map to this C, not this C, because this is the second C. And next one is A. Okay, and this is the third A here. So the third A, and then once you map it back, it goes to this particular A, all right? And then another A, which comes to the first A, which is this one. Okay, see, A, and I'll put A here. And then this is the first one, and it comes here. And the next letter will be C, so you put a C here. And C, this is the first C, you go here, and the first letter is A, become A. So this will be the final T, okay? Confusing, I know. I mean, I, I spent hours of time to figure this out. And even with these slides, right? So, so again, this is, uh, you can still read those, but that, those doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, okay, let's try this again, okay? So we got this BWT after reversed uh, 
after this transformation, your string is GC dollar AAAC, okay? Now you want to derive what is the original string, okay? So you start from the beginning, the first one, which is G, okay? So remember, you only have this. You don't have anything else, okay? You only have this particular uh, uh, column. And then you can generate the first one by resorting all the letters here. So you got the G here, okay? Now you go to the G, all right? Next letter is C, you put a C here, okay? And C, this is the second C in the string, so it is the point to here, and it becomes A. You put the A here, this is the third A, and then comes to here, okay, you put the A here, and this is the A again, the first A, and put the A here, but this will map to the first A, and then it's a C here, okay? And the C, you put the C here, and this C comes to this end is the C, and the, the last one is A. So this is the final uh, string. All right. We can do this 10 more times, but that won't help. You, you have to think it through and uh, to, to, to make sense of it. All right. So this is uh, called unpermute or unsort functionalities for the BWT. Again, that question remains. How this string transformation can help us to do the query? Okay. So what happens is... Uh, now, I'm trying to figure out whether AAC is in my sequence. Whether AAC, the sequence, it is a small part of the original sequence, whether it's in. So what happens is, initially, you don't know which part of the genome it comes from. So you, you, this is your reference. And so your searching region is really the, all the six base pairs, all right, all the six positions. And then you come to the first location, which is the C, okay? The first one is the C. And uh, now you, you want to search C, and then you point to C here, okay? This is the bottom, so you've got two Cs here, all right? And then next one is A, okay? And then you've got A here, you see, oh, these two didn't help me. Next one, both of them are A's, okay? So you move to here, this A, becomes, it's the second A here, so you move to the second A. This is C, this, this part you move to the end of the second A. And next one is A. And this one, oh, this is dollar, so this is, doesn't really work. And this one is A, and then this narrows down to the AAC part. So again, you have to work through by yourself, but the point here is uh, this is query part is very, very fast. So you start it from the very beginning, six base pair, six potential locations, and you can, in a couple of steps, you can narrow it back to the one particular location. Okay, think about that. If you build this uh, bowler wheeler transformation for the entire human genome, and, uh, and that searching can really help you dramatically. All right, um, so let's uh, take a look at this again. So you, you, you want to search AAC, and then we got a, a sixth nucleotide to begin with, and you look for the first one letter is a C, and the C is here. So this you narrow down your searching range, region here, and you come here to look at the next one, and next one are both A. So next one is A. Both A didn't help you, but this one really goes to the second A. This is the third A here, and the next one for this one is a dollar sign. So you want to have another A here that, that didn't happen. But for this one, there's another A here, so it happens. And the next one, it goes to the, actually this A is the first A, and then it goes to here, this is the first A. Okay? Is that confused? All right. Okay. Let's twist some arms. And this is uh, another thing that uh, uh, for, the, for the, this is really for the, so, so what, what I'm talking about here is uh, for a short sequence, uh, 16 nucleotide, and you have a short query, and this will work. Well, however, that we have a hu whole human genome, which is really, really long, 33 billion uh, nucleotides. So what happens is, uh, uh, for every time that when we search for something, well, for example, for this one, when we talk about this A, and we need to know this is the second A in the field so that we can properly point to the next location, okay? Sometimes it's not really straightforward to calculate how many A's in front of it. 
the, the reason for that is we have the entire human genome. It's just not practical to count everything. So what happens is uh, there you want to do make some checkpoints, OK? So you initially, you come here, you map here, and this is A. You want to know which A it is, right? Is it number two, number three, number four, or number 10,000? OK, what, what you want is uh, you can scan by naively just uh, to the end, to the front. You know how many A's there. That will be really, really slow. Um, or, so what the real solution here, actually, is that you build some checkpoints. So for this particular location, you you make a mark. You say A here. Before that, there's a there's a uh, there's a 240 A's in front of me, 225 C's in front of me. So when you check about this, uh, and you know this is another two here, so this is a uh, rank 242. Okay. So this is just some some trick to help you to speed up uh, the searching process. And also, there's another feature is uh, I, I need to know that which reference positions that this point to, right? So I can, I can look into this AAC. I know there's a query here. But the point is I want to know which part of genome it comes from, right? So uh, there's a, also some uh, the naive solution is work left. So what, what happens is once you got your final AAC here, and you want to know that uh, how, much, how, how far away I am from this dollar sign, because the dollar sign is the end of the game, right? And then you can really walk further doing the walking until you got, get to the dollar sign, OK? So if you, if you need two more steps to go to the dollar sign, and that means uh, this is uh, the second location, uh, the third location of uh, the original uh, stream. And uh, I know you got confused, but I have to go through this so that you can go through the, the podcast and then so still figure that out, right? So, and, and, uh, so, so w one thing that you can do is you can see that the, you can build in this index here. So this one, you know there's, I need two more steps to get to the end, and, and then you make a two here. For this one, it's the six steps, or for this one, it's the five steps. So you can make the notes of that. But the problem is to make these notes for the entire human genome is also too big, right? Uh, and uh, so what, what the, the, the real solution for that is you just uh, randomly pick some locations, uh, I mean, that, that you want to make a record. What is, this is six, this is one. And then you still walk through it until you get to this point. So if this is one and the others were not recorded, and you need one more step to get to one, and that means that your original offset is two. So that can help you to locate where the initial searching the query comes from. OK? And the bow tie algorithm actually marks every 30 second row by default. OK? These are just uh, some of the tricks that help you to speed up the searching um, uh, process. Anyways, all right, so I, I know I went through this. Uh, there's no way you can get it, and it takes much more time for me to get it. And uh, you can go back to the podcast and uh, to walk yourself through. And uh, for the students, next time we may have a quiz on that. I'm not saying I will have a quiz on that. We may have a quiz on that, all right? So make sure that you, you, you know this uh, whole process. And then later you can put, put the whole things together. OK. Now. The summary for this uh, fast alignment theories. I know I didn't talk about any specific one, but I want you, your knowledge base to map to the specific general categories of this where the, the searching comes from. So the entire, um, for, for in, in terms of BWT index, this is called FM index, and uh, the size of the index will be the size as uh, the uh, initial string. What that means is uh, your initial strain is the whole human genome. It's three billion letters. And this is the size of your, your uh, BWT transformation. And uh, we also need about 15% of the size of T to build the, the checkpoints, OK? And also about 50% of size for the, um, the trace back which part of the genome it comes from. So in total, this uh, 
index size is about 1.65 times of the human genome. Okay, that's the point. For the borovillar transformation, the index size is 1.65 times of the initial genome. And uh, if we go to this, the surface tree, and the size of the index is 45 times of the human genome, which is uh, impossible to, to deal with, right? And uh, for, the, um, for this type, which is a hash table based, it's also about 15 times of the human genome size. So, so this is why that Borowiller transformation is so popular in the alignment algorithm, because of their really very much saved on the resource part. So you don't need a huge memory. Your memory size is only 1.65 times of the human genome, and you're in good shape. And uh, for others, it really requires much larger memory to do the sequence alignment, okay? And there's a two algorithms that use BWT as a, uh, the algorithm, okay? Now I, I want you to wake up. I know for a moment that you already know I'm talking, you don't know what I'm talking about, all right? And now I want you to make, make up because uh, now I'm going to talk about something that makes sense to start, okay? And uh, the bow tie, which is an algorithm that is most widely used uh, for the uh, alignment. And it's really, really, really fast, okay? So it, it's published here, you can go to the paper, and it's super efficient and super fast. And uh, it's you, if you align 25 million, 35 base pair reads per hour to the human genome, that's, uh, that's the speed that they can, they can get. And uh, what you need is only 2.2 gig of memory for human genome and two point, less than 3 gig of memory for pair end genome. So your laptop can do it, right? So it's really, really a very fantastic algorithm that, that a lot of people are using. The only problem for bowtie is it do not allow gaps. Okay, that's a major problem. Because we know that insertion deletions are one of the things that we are very much interested in, in terms of uh, identify one type of genetic variance, okay? And if you do not allow gaps, and all those will be missed, okay? And uh, it's used, uh, the, uh, the good thing of that is used by many other popular downstream tools, like Top Hat, which we will be talking about when it goes to the RNA sequencing analysis. And cufflinks is a, it's a also for the uh, RNA sequencing analysis. And also, I believe that Bowtie is also been built into a Crossbow. Crossbow is a is a, a cloud solution for uh, sequence alignment, and um, and so so they they were already put in. So it's it's, it's a very well done algorithm. It's a very smart. Actually, everything that I was talking about was from. Bowtie's website. They have a slides there and to show this. And another algorithm that is probably more popular is called the Borowiller Aligners, or BWA. Okay? And this is also published, uh, published in 2009. And this one, comparing to Bowtie, it allow gaps. So see, these are some of the information that I will expect that the graduate student from medical school know about it, okay? Bowtie doesn't allow gaps, and BWA allow gaps. And there's a two versions of BWTA. One is the short, for the shorter than 200 base pairs, and there's a long version as well, okay? And uh, another good feature of BWA is a sequencing error is considered in this, okay? When you do the alignment. Any questions so far? It, it doesn't speed up. So, so these two, they are the same speed, actually. It's, this is just a much more efficient, the way they, they make it a compact. In theory, I thought the, the surface should be the time so, so is this one. So, so is this one. In this one, you only use the index, and so you have to go through half of the, on average, half of the. 
So that that's what those uh, so, so that's a really really good 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 point. And uh, so once you go go back to the podcast, and that that is something you need to check about. This is where the checkpoints helped. This is uh, some of the 15% of the size of the information that they were indexing the checkpoints, and those really speed up things. Mm. All right. Uh, so BOTA and BWA, those are most two popular algorithms, and uh, so you, you really need to know about it. Yes. Uh, so the question is, uh, how does this compare to BOTA in terms of speed and memory? It's a little bit slower. There's some statistics on that. So, so there's some slides about that. All right. it's, but it's really, really, this is, so, so for a lot of applications, BOTA is not a choice. It's not, it's not possible, right? Because you want to identify those small insertion deletions, BOTA just cannot do it. But BWA, it really helps on that part. Okay, so uh, now we go back to the uh, theory part a little bit. I'm going to talk about evaluation for the alignment and uh, so if you got a 50 nucleotide sequence, you map it back to the genome. How do you know it's good or bad alignment? So th this is what I'm talking about. So a, a straightforward way is you just report your Smith-Waterman score, right? So you do the dynamic programming. There's a match, and you, you give credit, and it's mismatch. You give penalty, or there's a gap, you give certain penalty. So that is, uh, you, you just report it. There's some algorithms do that. So BFAST just report. Uh, the uh, smith waterman uh, scores. And there's a more statistical-oriented way to do this, which is called a, a flat scale mapping quality calculation. And this is something, when you do the data analysis, this is something often be used, OK? And the publication is here, and the, which is uh, also in our Encore system. And in our Encore system, this is uh, the same paper as the MAQ, that algorithm they published, OK? Using MAQ and it's modified in both and BWA, but both of them are really reporting the same mapping qualities. And it's a posterior probability. What's that supposed to mean, right? Don't worry about that. So, and uh, other than this, uh, uh, next slide I'm going to go through this mapping quality uh, calculation. But the other factors that need to be considered, uh, uh, but sometimes it should be evaluated independently, is uh, uh, the number of mismatches. Uh, allowed and the number of gaps. And uh, so if you've got one sequence rate, you map to the genome, and you can count the number of mismatches of that, that alignment, how, how many it is. Sometimes these are very important statistics, because when we do the alignment, we tend to, be, to increase the sensitivity. We tend to make alignment a little bit looser, meaning that we allow a lot of mismatches. And uh, this is a, a good place to tighten it up. You really need to uh, minimize the ma mismatches or what is uh, the way that you can tolerate. And the number of gaps and also is this a unique mapping and those are the things that need to be, can be evaluated as well. Okay, now we come back to this, uh, FRAT score mapping quality. I know Janice is working on some of Tatiana's project and uh, all of those mapping quality calibration and will be shown in the next slides. So I know it's a beautiful equations, right? It always doesn't make sense. So let's try to make sense of it. So this is the flat scale mapping quality calculation for alignment. So let, let me tell you what that really means. This is the, the reference genome, OK? And this is your read. And, and, and then your algorithm, or it's BOTI or BW, whatever it is, reported that this particular read aligned here, OK? And there's a two mismatches. And what is the quality of this mapping? How do you calculate that? So let's go back to this. If everything is a perfect match, great, right? It's beautiful. But if it's not a perfect match with two mismatch here, and then we can go back to these two mismatch locations to look for their base quality score, right? So some of maybe A, this location, the quality is 20, meaning p-value is 0.01, and the other one is not very well done, but they somehow reported there's a, there's a location here. So the base quality score. And the question here is, what's the probability 
okay, that this read is actually a perfect match. No two mismatch here. It's a perfect match. What the probability that this read is a perfect match is both A and the B are sequencing errors. Is that right? The probability of uh, this is a perfect match is A and the B, they were both the sequencing errors. So what's the probability of that? Is uh, you time their, their base quality together, which is 0 0.001. This is the probability of uh, this uh, is a perfect match. OK? Does that make sense? All right. So this is not Bayesian, right? But again, posterior probability is Bayesian, whatever that means, right? So what happens is uh, this probability is not that high, but that may be the highest among the genome, within the genome. Any single other location, so when you do the mapping, you can generate a score. Let's say the same rates I want to align here, probably then every single nucleotide is a mismatch, right? And the probability that this is a perfect match in that location has to be all of them made a mistake. So the p-value will be very, very small for every single other potential matches. And the, your posterior probability is your current matching location divided by every other location. And we hope that it's close to one. And the closer it is to one, and it's really stand out compared to anybody else. Okay, every other race will have a very, very low p-value. And so if the mapping, this mapping is unique and it's best, so your p-value, there's a posterior probability call will be very close to one, okay? And the mapping quality definition is de designed just based on very much like uh, the, the, the FRAD scale. So you can see you use one minus this value, which is a very, very tiny value, and then you do the log 10 divided by 10, times 10, all right? Okay? So this is how it is defined. So it's somehow it is uh, the mapping quality considering the mismatches, the, the base core, base cause, okay? All right, you may see some problem here, all right? What the hell, how I can calculate every other potential locations, and that would be too much work to do, right? And uh, good, because this is a, basically you have to go through the entire genome to calculate the, the denominator here, right? So there's an approximation here, which, so there's an equation, it's in the, in, the, in the paper, you can look at that. But the point is, they only look for the quality for the second best match, okay? If it's significantly much better than the second best match in the genome, you're in good shape. So they, they have this approximation on these base qualities. All right, we're still good. So, yeah. If you have multiple locations, and this one will will report very differently. This is a, it will not report a very good mapping quality score, and that's why that this scheme had some problem, and that's why that when I talk about uh, um, in the last slides. So when we say this uh, FRED mapping score was used reported in Mac. MAQ. So that, what, what I was talking about was reporting MAQ, and later was modified in Bota and BWA, just taking care of multiple alignments issues. Okay? And the, the, those were fixed as well. So, for, for, the, for the mapping quality? Well, so, so Jake is asking whether this mapping quality is always from 0 to 100. Take a moment, think what 100 means. Means p is equal to 10 power minus 10, okay? And actually, it can go even further. It can be 10 minus 20, power minus 20. And then your mapping quality will be 200. But those really doesn't make any difference anymore. So they max up those quality score as 100. So if it's 100, that means uh, Nothing can beat it anymore. So there may be smaller p-values, but you don't really care about the, the, the differences. Okay? So those uh, quality scores are somewhere from 0 to 100. All right? So I want to make sure that you understand here is uh, 
uh, for the we, we talk about several levels of mapping uh, quality, right? The base quality, the mapping quality. Here is uh, the mapping quality. Okay, I haven't talked about the variant quality, which we will talk about uh, in the next few lectures. Okay, but this is uh, the mapping quality. Make sure that put it in the right place in, in your knowledge base. Okay, and uh, so what I was talking about was uh, the mapping quality, the alignment quality for one particular read. Okay, I haven't evaluated the aligners. So the same set of data, you may get alignment using bowtie, using BWA, using BFAST, or using any, anything else. It's very possible you can do that, right? But which one is the best? How can we evaluate the alignment algorithm itself? So this is what we were trying to get. So there's a, some, a lot of things that need to be considered. The first one is a, the so-called computational resource, which is the memory and the number of CPUs, how much memory you need. For example, if I have only a laptop, I need to do it, probably both has your only choice, right? And, and then your speed and things is, is other considerations. Yes, speed. And whether that algorithm work on the long race, like a four five four race, or whether the gaps were allowed, okay? Bow tie doesn't allow gaps. There, there's a comparison in the later slides, so don't worry about that. Uh, BWA allow gaps and BFAS allow gaps. So those are the things that need to be considered. Does that algorithm take care of a paired end race? Okay, some of them doesn't. And uh, will base quality be considered? All right, so whether the sequence of quality has been considered. So this is uh, one table that shows uh, the comparison of different hours. And, uh, and uh, this is, of course, uh, the, uh, whether it's hash table or, or, or things like that. And whether it, oh yeah, whether it take care of the color space data is, is another issue. And uh, you can see that it's listed there. And long rays and the gap, so you can see there's a distinction here. Both has specifically not talking about the gaps and others does, and uh, taking about care about the pair ends or the quality information, all those things that you need to build into your equations when you pick the alignment algorithm that you need to use. Okay, and before we get into uh, a little more math, so actually my way to pick the algorithm is to pick which group get the largest amount of funding. All right. That's the only way that they can continue to support their algorithm and uh, so that uh, it can, so, so the algorithm, the, the BFAS, the BW, especially BWA were supported by initially Southern Genome Project and then spin off of that and they were very well supported and there's a many later algorithms support that. There may be some other algorithm that offers a better sensitivity and specificity, but if uh, for the future data analysis to become difficult, it, that is something that you need to consider as well, right? And uh, another, so these are just the thing that what they can do and they cannot do, but for the real evaluation, we need to evaluate their accuracy. So the accuracy is evaluated by the sensitivity, specificity, or selectivity. So these are, I, I copied this from Wikipedia, and I think it's a, a lot of you are very familiar with this. Okay, and uh, so you can go back to think about that and what sensitivity really means. Sensitivity means that if uh, I say I got a uh, hundred reads and I map back to the genome, what's the percentage is cracked, right? What's the percentage of the one that I think is is mapped is cracked, and uh, and uh, this is a uh, this is a selectivity actually. So, uh, sensitivity is uh, uh, sensitivity is more like. Uh, if there is a 100 variants in the genome, after I do my algorithm, what's the percentage of those has been identified? Those are the recalls. So the procedure and recalls, those are something you can, you can think through. Um, but to do the real comparison, it becomes difficult, even though we know that a sensitivity specificity, those are the things that can be built into the equations. But, but the problem is uh, when we evaluate the short race algorithm if we use real data, we cannot really evaluate it because we don't know what the real answer is for the real data. 
And the people do is they do the simulation. So you know where the true answer is. You know the, which one is the right, correct alignment, which one is not. And the data I want to show you here is uh, published this year. And it's uh, another algorithm. It's called SHRIMP2. And it's for a Toronto group. And it's, uh, it's very well done. And I haven't evaluated that. But, but since it's very well respected, they use Smith Workman. I don't know how they make it that fast. Okay? Uh, but the point is that they also, when they publish their algorithm, they compare that their performance versus the three other uh, most commonly used aligners, BFAST, BW, and Bowtie. Okay? I thought that this comparison may or may not be fair, but th this comparison will be fair. right? So that's why I put in there. Right? I want to see the evaluation between BFAST, BW, and Bowtie. And these are the three algorithms that my groups are using uh, very often. The data that, that uh, will be shown is actually they generated 6 million color space pair and rays. This is for solid platform, apparently. And uh, so it can be 50 base pair. And another set, it was 75 base pair. Here's the results. Okay, from the back, I want you to see the colors. The green means good. The red means bad. Okay, that's as simple as it is. So you can see this is a 50 base pair, paired end, 75 base pair end, pair end, and the 50 base pair single end, 75 base pair single end. And they want to look for the performance. Okay, and for each category, the top four columns, they were snips. Okay, there's no gaps. So you can see there's a no snip. One snip, two snip, four snips. Okay, and I want to see for the B fast, this uh, precision and recall both are very close to 90 percent, but for BWA, okay, with one mismatch, the recall is only 27 percent. That really, really concerns me. Okay, I think I think. Uh, my group used uh, B fast, so we are pretty safe on that part. And uh, but for the BWA and the performance are that bad, it's really, really su surprising to me because it's such well-respected and widely used algorithm. Maybe for the nucleotide base, it's, it works better. But uh, currently speaking, that for the um, for the color space data, I'm going to stay on the B fast. So these are the information that you can read in a little bit further and to evaluate which algorithm that you want to use. This B panel here is the speed, coming back to uh, Kelly's question. So, so the, this is the shrimp. This is what their, their time use. So you can see that bow tie is really, really very fast, while the B fast is also the slowest ones. So those are the things. But I guess I can wait, right? So if, if, if the, the recall, the, the precision is an is important thing that I, I, I'm, I'm considering. And uh, oh, another thing is uh, this speed. Sometimes it's not that critical because we, because we can wait. And sometimes it becomes critical when it turns into money, right? So when you use uh, cloud computing, so the time you start to click that button, you start to pay, right? If, uh, if this one takes about 2.5 hours to do it, this one takes 200 something hours to do it, that's one thing you really need to consider as well. But for us, so we are OK. We just burn our computers fine. OK? All right. Any questions? All right, so we are at uh, 5.10. So I'm going to go through the, some of the, the data format parts. I'm not going to finish it. And we'll skip the second. Uh, um, break, right? Is that okay? Because I'm pretty fresh today. I know, especially I know part of the lectures, the 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 borrow wheeler transformation. That part, you were pretty relaxed because your brain are not really following me. I know that, and uh, so so I, I think you are fresh as well. Okay. So in terms of the file formats, and these are the things that a biologist needs to know, needs to get, come back. All right. So especially for the students, when you go through your data, you want to know what is reported in different file formats. For the informatics students, this is even more critical. These are the files you need to code, write your, your, your programs on. Okay? And there's the three type of data I want to talk about. And they are most standard formats. There's a, maybe hundreds of data formats. I'm not going to go through those. But every single of them, one of them, will be 
in, integrate into one of these three categories. And these are the most commonly used standard formats. So a lot of programs already been written based on that. The first one is the raw data. Okay, it's called FASTQ file, and this is the raw sequence. There are some variations. So we know the Illumina report is something called QSeq or solid. It's two files. So it's one is the CS FASTA, the other one is the CAL file, which integrates the qualities. And the second level is a sequence alignment file. This is a SAM file, okay? And there are exported files from Illumina platform and sorted from Illumina platform. It's also parallel to the, to the SAM file, which is align, give you a lot of alignment information. So you, you got a raise after you, you align it back to genome and it tells you uh, a lot of features in there. We'll go through those, those. You cannot skip those. And the third one is the VCF file, which is a variance information. So you can think of, this is really three level of information. Raw data, alignment. Alignment is one alignment. It tells you the genomic locations, uh, how, what's the quality of alignment. But that is used in each individual read as a unit, okay? For the variant, that is you can turn your, your, your axis around. So it's a, each genomic location is a unit. It can be derived from multiple reads that cover this particular location, but this is uh, what variant uh, tells you. And uh, so there's three levels of information. And, uh, this variant VCL file, there's uh, some other uh, variations. It's called personal genome SNP information. You can use that as well. Okay? And, uh, and the FASTQ file, you can ex get it from the exported file as well. Okay. So first, maybe, all right. So we, we will go through what is a FASTQ file, all right? So FASTQ file is a text-based format for storing the biological sequences. All your raw data are FASTQ files, so keep in mind. So this is something where your analysis really starts. And it can be nucleotide space or color space, okay? What it gives you is four lines, okay? And uh, the first line is uh, the sequence identifier. It's just an identifier. It tells you a lot of information you may or may not need. And the second one is the meat, which is uh, the nucleotide sequence, okay? And uh, GA, I'm talking about the Illumina platform. Solid is a little bit uh, more complicated than that. And the third one is the comments. It's optional right now. It's reserved, not being used. And the last one is not a human language. It's a quality values, okay? We'll go through this. So specifically, the, the first three are pretty straightforward. I'm talking about, going to talk about the quality values. And this is uh, the base call. Keep in mind, we talk about a s three levels, all right? Qu quality for the base, quality for the alignment, and quality for the variant. And this is a quality for the base, and this is where the information comes from. So if I, I see this, numbers, what that really means. So here's what, what that is, okay? And uh, for Q is, uh, again, this uh, uh, transformation, which is uh, the FRAD score, okay? So if you see, uh, let's see whether we have a good example. If you see that this is the quality, the, the p-value is 0 0.01, that means uh, you have 1% of opportunity at that particular location, you get a sequencing error, okay? And then your Q will be 20 because uh, minus 10 log this uh, 0 0.01 is uh, 20. Your Q will be, quality will be 20, right? But you cannot, you do not store, store 20 in there. Rather, you store the ASCII encoding for that quality into that particular location. So when we talk about uh, these are not really meaningful information, but their ASCII code becomes uh, meaningful, okay? So what happens is uh, there are, for each individual letters or, or, or symbols, there's an ASCII code associated to that, and uh, do we all know what is ASCII code? We know that, right? Okay, I would assume you know that because I don't know how to ex ex explain that, all right? Okay. And, uh, and uh, if you don't know, find somebody who is native speaker and they will explain to you. Um, 
And uh, so for the first one, this one is a, it's a 33. This is our ASCII code. Uh, and uh, for the summer scale, this uh, is the FRAD score plus 33. For example, if for this particular location, the quality is 20, I'm going to do the FRAD plus 33, which is 53. And I go to 53 location, I will see this, oh, this is a 5. Then I will put a number 5 in that quality part. Okay, that is just a smart way to save the information, the numerical information with a more compact, in, compact uh, for version. Does that make sense? In the start? All right, I will assume it makes sense, okay? And, uh, but there's a complication in this because when, during this, uh, the process of this whole system developed, there's multiple versions of things that comes out. So people initially didn't have a standard, later they were following certain standards. So there's a lot of variations. For example, the summer scale is really the FRAT score plus 33, okay? For the Solaxa scale, it's uh, their FRAT score plus, the Solaxa number plus 64. So you can see Illumina is really annoying. They don't follow any type of uh, um, common things, right, the, the, the standard. So for the Illumina 1.3 platform plus, they use one scheme, and 1.5 plus, and they use another scheme. So it's, it's a, everything, they, they, they constantly change their, their, but so when we, when the informatics students, when you get the data in your hands, when you start to analyze the data, the first thing you need to know is what is the, this data? Is data from Illumina 1.3? Illumina 1.4, because your quality conversions will become different, okay? For the very early Solaxa scale, they don't even use the p-value. They use p divided by 1 minus p. So it becomes a, a huge standard problem, okay? I know I'm getting into very detailed, but I thought this is what this class is supposed to mean. Okay, so one question that we, one exercise we can do is, uh, for an earlier sequence experiment using Solaxa technology, okay, the ASCII code for the quality score was indicated as Z, and the ASCII code for Z is 90. The question is, what is the quality score after changing to Sanger scale? Because when you feed your data into the Sanger aligners, you want to convert those back into the Sanger scale. So the calculation is this. I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is uh, annoying. But uh, this is an earlier Illumina platform, so you can see that this is uh, what they call this their quality, okay? P divided by one minus P, and the log 10, and the do whatever, and plus 64, and this is equal to 90. And then you can trace back to calculate what the P value is, okay? And then you can go back to the summer sequencing and summer scale and do calculate this log and the plus 33 is 59, and then you want to see the ASCII code for the 59 is uh, this uh, semicolon. All right, so these are the things that you don't do that your user hand, but you need to write the program to do that. It's not complicated, but these are the information you need to know. Okay, so here is uh, what the Illumina data looks like. So we know that in the solid data, uh, in, the, in, the, in the standard fast Q data, it's uh, four rows for each individual read, right? Uh, uh, identifier, the nucleotide, uh, another identifier, and the quality, right? But this is how the Illumina scale tells you. The initial QSeq data will be, uh, so these are the line identification numbers and uh, where the, those reads are in the slides. And uh, this is uh, the index sequence. Uh, this is, this is uh, really for the barcoding purpose. And uh, this is uh, a, a, a number tells you whether this data is a single end or pair end. If it's pair end, it's, it can be either one or two, depends on which end it is. And uh, this is the sequence and the quality we just went through it, okay? And this is uh, for solid data. It's another format. So it could be, this is, uh, everything here is, uh, is the initial sequence and actually they store the, the quality information in a separate file. So you really need to have the code to do this type of conversion, okay? 
uh, again, we, our, my lab, we don't calculate by hands, right? We have the, the pipelines and all these conversions will be built, it's built in. But those are something that you need to keep in mind. And this is, so when you deal with the data, you get the data first, and you want to know which platform it is so that you know which actions to take, okay? Very detailed, and it was a fast Q file. That was uh, how the raw sequence looks like, okay? Next one is a very important one, which is the SAM. It's called the Sequence Alignment SAM, and the binary uh, map. So the BAM, binary version of that is called the BAM file. And this is uh, published in this uh, bioinformatics paper. Actually, this is a standard alignment format right now, and it was generated by the Southern Genome Project. So you can see there's a lot of standard were produced from that project. Okay, so it is a generic alignment format. It supports short or long reads, support pair ends, support different sequencing uh, platforms, so it's flexible in styles, and so it's, it's good things, right? And uh, you want to go to this part. So you want to go to this website. Actually, we also downloaded that and put that into our Encore system. And this is a, a detailed explanation of what the SAM format look like, what individual field uh, will tell you. And the BAM file is a binary format of this SAM, and uh, it's really uh, the, the major thing that we, 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 we are using. However, this BAM file is not something um, that people can read, right? It's a, it's a binary format. Okay, so for the SAM file, there's a two components. The first component is the headers. The second one is uh, really the alignment information, okay? And uh, for the headers, this is the basic information for the files. It documents those basic informations. It includes uh, the for format version, the sorting order of the alignment, and, uh, and all those things. And they also have the reference sequence information. This is very important. You get the data, you can align it based on mouse genome. You can align it based on bacterial genome. And even for the same species, let's say human, and you can align it based on different human genome build, right? It can be 36 version, can be 37 version, and the, your coordinates will be a little different. So, so the, the, let me fix this first. I hope I can. All right, I think it's plugged in. And, uh, and it's which, because uh, once you, you, even for the human, that if you build different uh, assembly versions, and uh, the coordinates will be different, right? So when you see this read, this is the start and end location, and the, that location is depend on which genome version you are using. And the read group information, so this is a more like a, which genome center generated. This is from Broad, this is from IUPUI, and uh, and which genome center and data flow order and library and those informations, and which program were used to do the alignment. So this is a major thing that you want to record, right? Is that based on Bowtie or BWA or what kind of alignment algorithm? And the additional text comments are there. Okay, so for the alignment, this is a real one. Let's go through it. It's impossible to look in this view, and I'm going to, this is just one of the, the, the rows in that, okay? So what happens is, uh, and these are the information so I expect you to know for the students who register class, because those are the information you need to go into to look at, them, okay? It's not, this is not a seminar tells you how great this technology is. This is a, a, a course that you need to go dirty and get into the data and to see how painful it is to process this data, all right? So I'm not going to apologize for how difficult this looks like, all right? So this is a one row in the sequence alignment, okay? There's a multiple things uh, in this. There's a mandatory field, all of them are. The first one is uh, the query name. So the, which, which sequence in the, is in the original sequence uh, file. And the second one is the flag. It's, it's 147 you can see from here. This doesn't make any sense now, okay? I will try to make sense of it, I will tell you how many information it integrates in the next slides. 
And uh, the third one is uh, the reference sequence name, which is easy. This is the chromosome one, right? And, the, and then the position, uh, this is uh, the start position of this alignment. And the fifth one is, uh, is a mapping quality, it's a flat scale, and uh, where is it? All right, this is zero. And uh, for this one, this is a cigar strain and a 75 M. I'm going to talk about what that really means. And uh, we spend a lot of time to figure this out, okay? And uh, the mate pair reference and, uh, and other information is there as well. And this is uh, the sequence information, and this is the uh, original quality information. So this is a very rich information. It has everything you need to know about one sequence alignment, one read aligned back to the genome, what type of information it integrates, okay? So for a lot of these are straightforward. For example, for the first one, it's just an identifier. This is a chromosome start location. And, uh, and for some of them are really straightforward. But for others, it's not. I, need to, I will go through this, OK? For the second one, this is uh, the flag. It's a bitwise flag. It gives you a lot of information, OK? Um, so I'm, I'm going to use this example. Um, so you can see this is flag. So this is uh, one of the files that, uh, that each individual row here. Let me see it. Let me go back here. Is that too small from the back? I'll try to make it bigger next time. Uh, so you can see that this is uh, the reference genome, okay? And this is uh, your different reads and the with identification number here, okay? And uh, this is uh, the alignment information which is listed there. Okay, and uh, we will go through this alignment information. The first uh, thing I want to go through is the second uh, field, which is the flag. So you can see this is 163 here, and this is uh, uh, 001683 and all these numbers. So how to make sense of this information? What happens is uh, for the 163, you need to convert it into the binary number, okay? After you do the binary number, you can align all these descriptions there. So 133, okay, 11000, you align everything here, okay? Every one here will give you specific information. For example, the first one, one here is a template have multiple fragments in the sequencing. What that means? That means it's a pair end or mate pair. So it, it's, it has another thing in the sequence that, that, that integrates in here. And the second one is each fragment properly aligned according to the aligner. That means both ends are aligned, okay? And the third one is uh, here the seek of the next fragment in the template being reversed is really confusing. What that's supposed to mean, all right? And what that's supposed to mean is here. So it's, uh, you see this is uh, the read, and the, the location is 7 to 30. Is it 7 to 30? Se oh, it's a 7. The location is 7 here, and it's 22 here because it, there is a... Um, oh, how, how, how do I explain this? So this is the R001. This is R001 here. There's another R001 here. So this is a pair end information. So what happens is uh, you, if you look for this R001, this R001, they do have their location information. This is from the number seven. This is from number 37. So from number seven, number 37, okay? And this one tells you the seek of next fragment in template being reversed. So you can see the next one is a kind of on the reverse strand of the genome, okay? And this one is, uh, tells you the last, of, this is the last fragment in the template, okay? That means this fragment itself is, uh, was this direction. So this is the second read in this fragment. So I guess, uh, there's a, there's a lookup table in the SAM tools uh, in that PDF file that I just uh, tells you where to go. But uh, the point here is uh, 
this simple number that integrates a lot of information that tells you how the original alignment was, uh, was done here. Okay? Is that okay? <laughs> so go back to the SAMTOOTH uh, uh, manual and you will be able to find out what these individual things will, will, will mean. Okay, so if you look at this particular race, this is 83, and if you do the transformation, 83, the binary number looks like this, and this really tells you that, that these are two things that match together. They, they are pairing together. It's a mate pair, it's, it's a paired end, and the fragment, uh, initial fragment was on the reverse strand. So all the information is in this uh, simple number. Okay. And the column four here is uh, actually the sequence genomic loci. So you know that this particular reads uh, start from position number seven. This is the 37, okay? And there's uh, something that also in, in very much detail that you need to know is uh, the column is the leftmost position of the alignment. This is uh, number seven or 37. And this is one based coordinate system. So what that means is uh, the first base of a sequence is one. There is a zero base group ordinate system sometimes being used. And uh, sometimes they are really, really confusing. But in the same tools, uh, in the same format, it's one base coordinating system. And uh, when you do the coding for the students, and uh, these are the information you really need to know, right? Otherwise, uh, all your alignment will be shifted to a different thing, and which it doesn't make any sense. And, uh, and the region is a closed interval. It's a region between third and the seventh uh, nucleotide will be identified as this. And, uh, and SAM file, GFL file, and WIGO files, they were both all used this one based coordinating system. Okay? The zero based coordinating system, the first base is zero, and region is a it's a, it could look like a half a, a close, a half open interval. And, uh, but you see how confusing that is. BAM file, which is the binary format of the SAM, it's using zero based coordination system. I didn't know why they are doing this. I didn't know why, why they do this, but this is the, the reality, okay? So those are the information you really need to know. And uh, cigar strain. This is another thing that is very unique, okay? It tells you every information of what the alignment will look like, okay? So if you see, this is a, a way too small, I think, um, for, from the back. So if you, how can I make it bigger? Um, you do, all of you have the hand up? Oh? Yeah, so, so basically the scar string is a, 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 a string of letters. Let me, let me try to enlarge this because this has to be. Uh, let me just the uh, MA2I, 4M, 10, 1D, and the three M, okay. So let's look at this one. This is one of the cigar strain, okay. And actually, this is uh, the first one. I just uh, I just uh, type in here. So what that means is, uh, so you can see that this alignment starts from position number seven in the reference genome, okay, and it has eight base pair perfect match. So it's 8M, and the two base pair insertion, okay? In the reference genome, there's a, two things are not there. There's a two base pair insertion, and the full base pair, another full base pair match, and a one base pair deletion, and another three base pair match, okay? It's not that difficult if you can see it, right? So, so basically, this uh, cigar strain tells you every single information of how the alignment occurred. In many cases, you see 50M, 
that means it's a 50 nucleotide all the way through its match or mismatch. If you see some of the I and the D things in the middle, that means there's an insertion deletions in the, in the equation. Okay? And, uh, and the, this uh, letter, this field here tells you the inferred fragment size. It's a signed observed template length. So what that means is uh, uh, it's only for the pair end. If it's zero, that means uh, there's a, it's a single end, all right? So because it's the inferred fragment size, it's number of base from the leftmost mapped base to the rightmost mapped base, okay? If uh, your alignment looks like this, and that means that for, for the first one here, and they start from number seven, this is a read, okay? And uh, because it's in the left, this is, will be the 39 base pair long for the fragment. You can make the calculation. So that's why they pay, put 39 here. And uh, based on this alignment, and uh, you can see this the minus 39, that means uh, the other pair is upstream of it. Okay? And uh, there are some other format, uh, information in the SAM file as well. Very, very important. Okay? I know it's getting boring, but it's very important. And uh, so the format, what they are giving here is, uh, is the tag, type, and value. So what, what that means is uh, one example is NM, I, and two. Okay, NM is uh, one specific meaning. I is meaning this is a number, and the number really is two. So. There's a 35 predefined fields in the current version and allow users to define it, okay? There's some specific fields which is very important. And the first one is AS. It's alignment score generated by the aligner, okay? So for one sequence raise, you want to align it back to the reference genome. You want to know the quality of the alignment. And this AS score really calculates the alignment score generated by the aligner. And the second one is a CM. It's added the distance between the color sequence and the color reference, or NM, which is added the distance uh, excluding clipping. Okay, what that means is uh, how, with this alignment, how many nucleotide difference of that particular read is from the reference genome. So how many reads nucleotides are different? And there are some other information, especially this H0, H1, H2. It's the number of perfect match reads, number of one nucleotide mismatch reads, or two nucleotide mismatch hits. So those are the information that some aligners will report as well. And the IH is the number of stored alignment in the SAM file, and the NH is the number of reported alignment that is not included in the SAM file. So these are the ones that uh, IH number this is one thing that my lab specifically look at, okay? For example, so if I have the IH number is equal to one, that means uh, this is uniquely mapped to the reference genome, okay? If it's uh, 100, that means these reads are aligned 100 times in the reference genome. I may not get the right information. I don't know which exact location it comes from. Okay, so this is a very important tag that we always look at. And other files including the original SCAR strain, so I already go through the SCAR strain, but they also potentially to do the refinement, refined alignment in the later stage. So the alignment, the initial alignment sometimes needs to be corrected. So if that happens, there is an original SCAR strain that usually is a, it's a, it's a before the realignment, where the scar strain is. And also the original mapping location be also before the realignment. And also this is important, the alignment program that report this particular alignment. And the number of fragments in the templates. Okay, and the BAM file actually is uh, the binary format of the SAM file, and there are, um, there, there are uh, conversion um, tools that you can find out in the, 
in the uh, same tool. So, so, so for the students who read this class, okay, we have to go through that as well. And uh, these uh, binary files can be indexed to achieve faster retrieval of the alignments overlapping with a specific region without going through the whole alignment. So, so this is really trying to speed up the searching uh, for the future. And BAM must be sorted by the reference ID and then the leftmost coordinates before the indexing. So, so th those are the information you can go through. And uh, for updated information about this SAM and the BAM formats, and uh, you want to go to the website more often to look at that. Okay? I know it's getting pretty annoying when we go through these file formats and the sum of the equations, but unfortunately, that's something that you really need to know. And even for the um, graduate students in the medical school, because uh, those are the data, probably Janice has the experience, those are the data that will eventually be shipped back to you. And when you open the file, there is not going to tell you the biological information that you really need. And those are the things that you need to independently evaluate. At least you need, if you cannot write the program based on this information, at least you know what information has been stored in this file format. Okay? And uh, for the School of Informatics students, uh, and I don't have to say the importance about this, these are the something of where your life is dependent on. This, uh, if you want to work on the next generation sequencing, those are the places that you have to start. Okay? We'll stop this time, at this time, and uh, uh, the, for the students who register the class, uh, please stay. We have some other business need to take care of. All right? Thank you very much. Yeah?